Hello, hello, and welcome in. So great to see some familiar faces, some new faces, names of people who are near and dear to us. So welcome in, everybody. Happy National Mentoring Month. Here we are, January 2023. I'm Lisa Fain, CEO of Center for Mentoring Excellence, and thrilled that you are all here. I um, was inspired this year to do uh, something different for National Mentoring Month, to talk to um, people who have been in longstanding mentoring relationships. In fact, I was inspired by a cousin of mine who um, years ago did a photo essay for long married couples. And being somebody who connects the dots, I thought, what about long standing mentoring relationships? Many of us have been in many mentoring relationships, but it takes some special chemistry to have mentoring relationships that go deep and go wide and go long. And um, so I thought there would be things for us all to learn um, as part of the CME, the Center for Mentoring Excellence Community on National Mentoring Month. So in a minute, I'll welcome my guests. Before I do that, a couple quick items um, of housekeeping. One is um, if you stay to the end, um, we will have uh, two things, a book giveaway, um, where you can choose, um, Michelle's going to do a random number generator. You can choose one of um, my books, this Mentor's Guide or Bridging Differences for Better Mentoring for one of our uh, guests. And the other is we will send you some resources on power questions for connecting with your mentoring partner. So stay to the end. Have your questions uh, ready um, because I know you're going to learn a lot from our guests today. So I want to introduce them briefly and then we'll just dive in with some questions. It is such a joy and an honor to have Chevy and Jim with us today, both friends and colleagues of ours. Chevy is a member of the Center for Mentoring Excellence facilitation team. He's also the uh, executive director of an organization that I care a lot about called Military Mentors, um, and I'm proud to be on that board um, as well. You can read Chevy's bio um, from all of our <laughs> promotional material, but let me just tell you that this guy is a superstar and a rock star and one of the best leaders uh, that I have ever seen. Um, and you're about to learn about his mentoring capability as well. Um, so I'm proud to call him a friend and a colleague. And also a friend and a colleague in Military Mentors is Jim Perkins. Jim, again, you can read his bio. We refer to him as the tech guy just before he got on the phone, knowing he could navigate all tech issues. But more than that, um, Jim is also a um, uh, uh, member of the military. Um, he's a major in the US Army supporting military innovation efforts. He's an expert in digital technology. Um, and he and Chevy have had this longstanding mentoring relationship. So I'm so excited uh, to talk to you about that today. So Chevy and Jim, welcome. And thanks so much for being here. Hey, thanks for having us. This is a this is a cool opportunity to sit next to a guy I call a, a friend and a colleague uh, for more than two decades, and then um, always good to hang out with you and Michelle for a little bit as well. Excellent, excellent. So, and thanks for teeing up. I wanted to introduce my colleague Michelle Hancock as well, who is a really important member of our team and makes everything work. If there's any technological questions or issues connecting, or you need links to anything, Michelle is your go to as well. So thanks for um, reminding me, Chevy, the importance of introducing Michelle. All right, Chevy and Jim, tell us, how did you meet? How did you first meet? Jim's a typical, it was just a typical mentoring relationship where I showed up one sunny morning <laughs> at college and proceeded to get berated by a very loud, angry <laughs> upperclassman who screamed at me for the next four weeks. Um, and made me do quite a lot of push-ups. Um, pretty typical. Pretty, totally normal. Um, and obviously, you know, um, we we just hit it off as as one does, um, kind of like Stockholm syndrome. I <laughs> felt very connected to Chevy, and um, yeah, the rest the rest is history. So how did how did you end up forming this mentoring relationship? Well, I guess, I guess I can tell that one. So the, the kind of longer part of that story is, you know, at the, so we were both going to West Point at the time, United States Military Academy. I was an upperclassman uh, being a cadre uh, and I was this, what was called a squad leader. So I'm in charge of 12 brand new cadets coming in. And Jim is one of those uh, 12 in the, in the, in the little squad. 
But during the academic year, when you transition from the summer to the academic year, uh, you don't end up staying in the same unit. So you end up going to, well, I was going back to my normal like academic year company and he's going off to, um, you know, some, some other place with an, another set of leaders. And I simply to this whole squad, I said, Hey, you know, if you want to stay in touch, if you want to talk to somebody outside of your, in the military, we call it a chain of command. Um, you can, you know, I'm always available. You know, I was uh, two years ahead of Jim at the, at that point. And I just said, Hey, come, come check me out. I'm a junior. And uh, Jim was the squeaky wheel. He was one of those guys in that squad that um, just came and asked questions. It was the, hey, what, why'd you pick this major? And then, hey, what did you do for your summer assignments? And then when I graduated, um, then he was asking questions via email, like, hey, what's it like to be out in the Army? And then when he came in the Army and I deployed before he did, he's like, hey, what is it like over there? And it just it just kept rolling forward. Um, and those questions turned into stuff outside the military as well, as well. Like, you know, how do you sustain a marriage? How do you like raise kids? And, you know, all that stuff just kept, as we both evolved and grew over time, we just kept asking each other questions um, and linking up and hugging and fist bumping each other and, and enjoying each other's pictures and kids growing up and all the stuff. It, uh, it just kept evolving and we just, I don't know. He wouldn't go away. I wouldn't go away. Uh, so it just worked out over time. We clearly have different perspectives on this because he's saying that I kept coming back to him, but like he was just <laughs> a squad leader who wouldn't go away. You know, he's like, oh, come to me if you have any questions. But by the way, I'm going to send you an email every month. Every month you can set your clock to it. That's right. To check in with you and to, to share what I'm reading or thinking about or an update of what I'm going through right now just for you to, you know, have an understanding of that. Um, and so that consistency and showing up um, is is one of the, the I, I think that is probably one of the biggest different differentiators and what you see in the data about mentoring, where it's not just on the mentee to be present, but also for the, the mentor to, to be actively engaged as well. Yeah, I love that. Jim, how did you, I mean, what prompted you to actually, you know, respond to those emails and to check in? Because so many of us get these, how you doing? And it's fine you know, the answer's fine. So, yeah. So the, the, it was very clear that this was not just a, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. um, you see the emails that he writes, um, uh, the high fives, that sort of the name of them has changed over time as he's been in different roles. But um, the, you, the effort, the thought was, was there. Um, it, it was not just an open-ended, tell me how, how things are going, but there were prompts essentially. Um, and and that makes a world of difference. Um, if you give someone a survey and you just say, tell us what we can do better, that they're not gonna, they're just gonna skip over it. But if you, you give them something to think about that that's fundamentally different and that's what Chevy provided. Um, but one of the things that was more important than, than any of this, uh, you know, there's this um, ism in the military, the saying, uh, no one knows uh, how much you know until they know how much you care or no one cares how much you know until you know how much you care. Um, and, you know, Chevy uh, Chevy was there with us for the first three and a half weeks or so of that summer. And then we actually got new leadership for the second half of the summer. Um, but on like the second to last day, we had, you know, some grueling ruck march um, back to, to West Point after doing some, some field training. Chevy was there, walked every mile of it with us. Um, didn't have to be, could have been on, on vacation. Um, and I got to walk and talk and just check in with this person who you could tell cared about us. And, and that was, I, I think, more impactful than a lot of the other day-to-day -day things. It, it showed that I wasn't just your, your squad leader for these three weeks, but I'm, I'm truly invested in your, your growth. And I think that was one of the biggest um, catalysts for it. Yeah, I love that. You know, we spent a lot of time at Center for Mentoring Excellence helping um, pairs set structure for their mentoring relationship and these formal mentoring relationships. And um, so, and it sounds like your relationship really evolved organically and informally. So I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on how, when you have this informal mentoring relationship, you can make sure that the learning is still there and the relationship is still there, even with this informal nature. Well, I, th I think the, the, the start to that answer is actually paired off of the end of Jim's answer is 
I got to be honest, at the time, I didn't know I was mentoring or growing a mentoring relationship. Um, I just thought I was, to Jim's point, like just trying to be invested and do the right thing, be in places where I wasn't supposed to be. So um, I guess there's a there's a piece of that that is informal, but is also structured if you look at it, right? Like we were setting the bounds of our relationship around time, around true investment, investment around uh, mutual respect, regardless of, you know, at the time he was a plea, you know, you're, you're an uh, underling at the academy. We were kind of breaking those bounds down by, by doing that stuff. So if you think about like a, you know, the literature around uh, mentoring stages, I mean, we were, we were right setting our kind of roles and responsibilities. We're doing some of that initial kind of negotiating stuff that would that would happen up front that you would do in a formalized relationship without actually thinking like, okay, now we got to sit down and do a contract with each other and think about how to take this forward. So I think for us, um, we had some pieces of the formality in there without the language that went with it. I think uh, things that you all teach at CME, what we try to um, ascribe to at Military Mentors, we try to put the language with it up front early for folks when they're learning about this stuff so they don't kind of stumble upon success like Jim and I did, but they have some um, some uh, some structure to how they're going to go forward. So I, I think that I hope that answers the question. Yeah, yeah. Um, how has your relationship changed over time? It's been a minute since those plebe days, right? <laughs> so how's, how has it, how has it shifted over time? Um, wonderful question. I, I think one of the biggest things is to be aware of, so Chevy is still active duty in the military. He's a Lieutenant Colonel. He's, he's actually up the street from me, um, like 30 minutes up the street, but, um, I'm not, I got off of active duty about five years ago. And so, um, at around that time, maybe slightly before then, um, because of sort of different career paths, um, things evolved from uh, a traditional um, mentoring relationship to more pure mentoring, where we each had um, greater experience in a certain area than the other person did, and we can and we could have a more uh, reciprocal relationship uh, as opposed to sort of um, traditional mentor mentee. And I, I think that was one of the points where it, where it really shifted for us. Um, Chevy has no idea how, what it's like to get out of the military. Chevy doesn't know. <laughs> I didn't know anything about having kids until six years ago. Chevy had Chevy. Uh, My oldest is thirteen. I, I'm about to put. I was about to put myself on the spot, and I was going to say fourteen. Um, <laughs> I have to do the math based on how old Lola is. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah. The, those 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 really important dynamics because uh, it started from this for lack of a better term career and educational mentoring mm -hmm. um that once that dynamic shifted um it, it really opened up the opportunity for us to, to grow in other ways i think lisa if i could add to that real real quick um i mean we're wearing stuff that says military mentors on it um jim brought me the idea of this organization mm -hmm. right he was the one who came along and said like Hey, let's let's do this thing. Let's try to scale what we know. Let's try to help the military understand uh, mentoring from a uh, from a uh, from an art and a science perspective. Let's do something where it doesn't matter what rank we have, we can walk in with an institution or a platform behind us. And that was Jim doing that. That was this the original idea for this was not you know his he's the incept he you know this came from his inception, not my own. Originally, he was just asking me for mentorship around it, really. He was asking me for advice about the science, about, you know, how to do this and maintain this transition out of the military and maintain a family and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's also how it evolved was we became, you know, we kind of came to a point where we started working on things together that was both ours as opposed to, hey, I have this thing over here and he has this thing and we're kind of helping each other maneuver it's more like let's build this thing together and then push this thing together for to his, you know, his point about peer mentoring. We started, you know, collaborating in the same space, but with different expertise. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I had the military, I still had the military stuff going and, you know, I ended up getting all this education in psychology. And then Jim had much more rich perspective from being in these innovator spaces 
and being out and being out of the uniform and looking at you know the the service from the outside in and us collaborating those ideas to kind of push this thing forward fantastic fantastic how i'd love to shift just a little bit to talk about the benefits that you've had from this mentoring relationship so um chevy you touched on it a little bit when you talked about this outgrowth of military mentors but um how else would you say that this relationship has benefited each of you jim um i have come to appreciate um an array of other personalities uh in in ways that came about from seeing chevy and seeing what what about our personalities are similar and different and having these conversations about personal challenges because i'm narcissistic or arrogant or you know uh uh uh, uh adversarial in in some cases you know learning from this you, you start to appreciate that hey you, i might think that i'm doing everything the, the the best way but there's there are other approaches to it and um i i don't know if i'd ever really refer to myself as humble it sort of goes against also labeling myself as a narcissist but um developing an appreciation and sensitivity to that um to me is one of the the things that I, I don't think I would have ever put into the bucket of traditional mentoring mm -hmm. this, this recognizing humanity and others in, in a way that I, I never really had before yeah um, there's a self-awareness piece of that too that's just huge right it's it's the learning for, about others but it's the learning about yourself on the way to doing that absolutely um Chevy so for me, um, I think, I mean, I could probably talk for the next eight hours on this uh, alone, um, and that's not a, a bad thing. Uh, when you have somebody like Jim, right? Like when I think of, I have, I really only have two relationships that I have um, that I would call mentoring relationships as, as, as long as is this, this like over two decades. Jim is one of them and, and my friend Danny is another. Um, it's the, I think what, what I've learned a lot, what I've taken a lot away um, from Jim is um, watching long-term investment. I mean, I'm only 42, so this is half my lifetime, right? Watching what long-term investment can sprout mm. uh, with, I mean, I don't know what you think, Jim, but you know, it, it's not like we sit down for three hours once a month to talk to each other, right? Like it's text messages. It's, uh, it's, it's what I call what I would probably call micro investments that have like this exponential kind of impact over time. And you only get that from the time already put in. It's almost like you start out investing in the stock market. At first, you got to put a, maybe a big chunk in it. But then after the time goes over time, um, man, it starts to grow a lot. And then you don't have to put so much in. And then, you know, you, you make these little kind of micro adjustments over time, but you're still making a lot of money. That's what I've gotten a lot of out of uh, Jim and I's relationship. And in addition to that is Jim is um, in a lot of ways a, um, a mirror of mine, if I can say. Like I, I have never tried to make Jim into my own image. Like we're we're in a lot of ways kind of radically different, right? Black guy grew up Southern Baptist, no beard on my face, right? White guy, Catholic, grows up in the North, uh, obviously has a very handsome beard on his face. Like uh, we can be in a lot of spaces, polar opposites. But because of that, and because we're in different circles, I get to see myself and him reflected in a different way, as opposed to just seeing somebody else that just, you know, does the same, that's just aspiring to be a, a different version of me, if you will. And then the other piece maybe is that yeah, Jim now has more kids than I do, right? And I get to, and he has boys and I have all girls, right? So I get to see those kind of different things, those different ways of of being a father we we're both in the reading but the way we kind of grew our kids with regard to those kind of things um slightly different but so much the same at the, at the same time it's it's like i don't know cute and and bubbly and huggy and 
and handsome and all that stuff all in between. Yeah. I love that. You know, we talk a lot about talking about in mentoring relationships, talking about commonality and difference. And it sounds like the two of you have really modeled that, um, you know, not just looking for those places where you have the intersection of the things you have in common, but really talking about the ways in which you're different and using it as a springboard for learning. That's it's fantastic. Yes. Um, what have you learned about mentoring through this longstanding relationship that you've had? Jim, you want to take that first? Yeah, Chevy has forgotten more about mentoring than I have <laughs> learned throughout this process. But I mean, he's got four degrees with psychology in them. Um, so I you, I get a little credit for myself. Um, very, very much so the ability to talk intelligently about the art and science of mentoring to me is the, the, the biggest part of this. When it came to starting military mentors with, with Chevy, you know, I under, I recognize that there was this problem that the, the Department of Defense was not capable of, sort of providing this service within their, their own organization just because of the nature of the way they're designed. But I didn't know how to solve it. Um, I had this idea of like, we should solve this, but that's about it. Um, and Chevy was able to just lay out pages and volumes of different opportunities for, for how to build this and point me in directions to learn about um, not just the definition of mentoring, but, you know, um, social differences between the Navy, the Army, the Marine Corps, and how they define it in those, those spaces, um, the differences between coaching, mentoring, teaching, um, and, and various other types of um, developmental relationships. Um, and, and all of this is to say that, you know, being able to now be very precise in terminology around uh, what is and isn't mentoring or challenges within mentoring experiences, this conversation we're having, uh, this is what I've learned about it. I had none of this um, uh, lexicon five years ago. Hmm. Love it. How about you, Chevy? Um, I've learned the practical application of the science. Uh, just to extend Jim's kind of thoughts here, like, you know, there's one thing to be a, a scholar on this craft um, and read all the books and know all the things. And then it's another to put the stuff into place. So, you know, am, am I like sitting down with Jim and saying like, all right, let's talk about your career function of the cycle uh, of this stuff. And, and we now we're going to shift a psychosocial function of your mentoring, our mentoring relationship. No, no, we're not doing that. But to be able to take that lexicon and take the larger literature and put it into a frame and a in a in a discussion and think about kind of these different pieces, thinking about the mentoring cycle and all this other literature that's out there, but then put it into practice for a long time um, has been the greatest journey. It's you know I, obviously just like you, Lisa, we get called um, to to speak on these topics. And, you know, I can stand into a, in a room and I can say, and you've heard me tell the story of Gemini, right? Like I can, I can talk from a literature perspective, but I can actually talk about like a long interim, uh, a long interim um, in-depth relationship that I have that I can pull on and say, well, I have also the practical expertise. Um, and then the last piece of thing I think I've learned about mentoring is that even though careers and things can change over time, family dynamics can change, you know, the major kind of piece in the middle of all of that is mutual trust and respect and long-term investment. So I've learned that I just got to keep investing, right? As long as I stick with the relationship, there's been times, you know, when Jim's kids were brand new or something that maybe he's, you know, scooting off the net a little bit more because he's got, he, he's not getting sleep and things that it just requires me to reciprocate, right? I need to kind of, just poke and prod and be there a little bit more. And it's been other times when, you know, maybe, heck, I've been deployed in things like that where I, I have no connectivity and Jim can send me an email or a note or like rapid fire, get right back uh, with me lockstep when we're back in the same time zone. I've learned uh, that too. Love it. All right. Well, I had promised that we would go for half an hour. So I want to make sure to ask you this each, each to um, answer this question. What advice would you have for new mentors or new mentees who are aspiring to a relationship like uh, the one that you have? Chevy, why don't you start on this one? You're nodding with big smiles, so we'll capitalize. Yes. On um, 
I get a, a, a version of this is, you know, how do you find a mentor? How do you find a mentee? Um, and the way I like to to think about it is, you know, if you're going to, you know, you can't, Jim and I are always going to start ahead of you because we got 20 years doing this to, with each other, right? So you can't make up the time. But what you can uh, make up is the intentionality, right? Like you can get right to the intentionality. So I would say, first, um, if you're looking for a relationship like the one we have, start by looking close because mm -hmm. you actually might have someone right there in your space, right next to you, that's already asking you the right questions or poking and prodding you in a certain way where you're already showing up for them as a, ment as a mentor. And if you're a mentee, Heck, you might have a neighbor that's a that's a you know Saudi or a, a Desert Storm veteran or works down at the YMCA that you always kind of walk with or grab the groceries for or are sitting on this porch or something like that. They might be a person in your life that's already giving you some mentorship. So look close; it might be right there already. And then I would also say look far, which is kind of oxymoronic, right? Like you got to do the other side too, because. You know, maybe you're just looking in your local space and you're looking for the intentional long term relationship and it's just not manifesting because you're I mean, it's it's just too close for you and you got to get outside of your circle um, and you got to get outside of that initial space and try to find someone that can stretch you. Right. You can have people in your life that, um, you know, might be outside of your region, might be outside of your expertise, might be a couple of time zones away. Please look for those people. Um, as, as Lisa has told me before, those are the people that can, you know, stretch, you're looking for people, you know, can help you with your stretch goals, looking mm -hmm. specifically for people who have expertise outside of your realm that you maybe want to gain or, or a place you want to be pulled into. So look close and then look far, just make sure it has the intentionality. I love that. Jim? Um, this gets back to what Chevy was saying before about sort of how military mentors came to be and sort of the, our philosophy around it. Um, uh, I think he used the, the words about being intentional and the second layer on not just finding the, the mentor is understanding what you're getting into. Spend a few minutes to, to do some reading. Um, if, if you cannot define or draw a picture of mentoring as we like to play a game, um, you're, you're probably not prepared to go find a mentor if you don't know what you're looking for. Um, you know, anybody can be your mentor if you don't know what the definition is. Um, and so um, spending a little bit of time understanding that side of it will give you the, the structure, the guardrails, the, um, the certainty that you are, you have found someone who's going to be able to provide the relationship that you need. Um, and that's, that's sort of what our, our, our philosophy is. So um, I, I think it's broadly applicable to, to anybody else who's thinking about getting into this space. Fantastic. Um, I want to just give you each a chance to express what you most appreciate um, about the other. And in, in terms of this mentoring relationship, I know you have a, now you have 20 years of friendship as well. But when it comes to mentoring, what is what is what is it that you, you know, you put on the front on that bumper sticker right? um, in terms of what you appreciate about the other? Hey, I, so I, I'm laughing and my face is hurting from cheesing because. This is going to sound counterintuitive, but Jim is such a nerd. And I love that because I am too, right? Like when I say we can be so different, like we're so similar in this way. Like we have this, it's okay to be who we are. And, and Jim knows this. In my house, being a nerd is a compliment, right? And I think in our relationship is if we were to call each other nerdy, that would be a compliment. I appreciate him always being, you know, he always talks about the amount of degrees and stuff I have, but Jim is, is a genius, right? Like he's always honing our relationship in a, in a way where we can think really sharply and really kind of beyond ourselves. I mean, when we were trying to fix this mentoring thing some years ago, I just wanted to go get more mentees. Jim was like, no, let's start a nonprofit. What? I mean, the, just that kind of, some people would say outside of the box, this, his box was bigger than mine at, at the time. It was definitely outside of my box. It was well within his box. Um, that bit, ability to stretch and to think and to be sharp and to be witty and to be nerdy and to grow a beard and be handsome at the same time uh, is, is good for me. 
Jim? Um, thank you very much for saying that, Chevy. Um, it, one of the things that Chevy and I talk about in our relationship is sort of goal setting and uh, personal identity and uh, core values. And uh, Chevy will often say he is purpose built to serve people. Um, and that is is absolutely true. And what I value most about him is what I said before, um, his intentionality and him being there, showing up. Um, the the time that he has spent, you know, I I have not invested in this relationship nearly to the extent that that Chevy has. Chevy had to do the investing for the first few years to really get, you know, to to make it abundantly clear to me and other people in that organization that and and the countless other mentees that he has that that he's there for them. That it is not just a hey, how are you doing, it, but th this more thoughtful, curated set of questions to. Uh, type of connection. And that to me, not only do I appreciate because I'm a beneficiary of it, but I'm also inspired and sort of charged to uh, meet that, to um, to show up for, for him, for others uh, in ways that I think I would let myself off the hook. He is my, he's my workout buddy in that regard, um, keeps me accountable. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, um, I have my own takeaways here, but I'd like to ask the folks who are have um, who are listening in and who have attended, if you got a takeaway, if you if you have a takeaway from what Chevy and Jim have shared, please type it in the chat. Um, it's great feedback for um, Chevy, for Jim, for Michelle, and for myself as we think about these sessions. Um, I mean, I can think of three off the top of my head: show up, show up consistently know what it is that you're in for and continue to invest in the relationship. And that's four, not three. My counting has never been that. <laughs> um, all right. I did promise a giveaway. So it, a couple of things that we're going to um, uh, put in the chat and I'll read the take, I'll read the takeaways after we do this. I just want to make sure for the folks who have to go that they have this. If you would like a resource for questions for connecting with your mentoring partner, Michelle is going to put a link to that in the chat. Feel free to download that. It's a great um, structure to really begin to dive deep so you can begin to create some of the connections like Chevy and Jim are talking about. And uh, Michelle, I'll give you a chance to do that. And then I'm going to ask you for our winner um, of the book. Um, so I'll give you a second to put that link in the chat first. Additionally, we are recording the session and the um, link will be the link to this will be in that session too. If you can't, for some reason, you can't download that. Um, and uh, for the winner of the, okay, it's Ronna Lee McMahon. Ronna Lee, thank you so much for joining. If you could um, uh, stay on afterwards or uh, message Michelle directly with your address and which book you would like, whether you want Bridging Differences for Better Mentoring or The Mentor's Guide, I'll send you a signed copy of one of those books. So thanks so much for joining. Look at all of these takeaways. A quality relationship requires an investment of time. Look near and far. Look for stretch opportunities in mentoring relationships. Uh, trust, need, you need to be pushed on stretch goals. Fantastic. Fan, val, value and cherish the differences. You learn so much about yourself as you understand new ways of approaching things. So I hope you join us next week, but I also want to give Chevy a chance to talk about um, there's very limited seats for an event that's coming up for military mentors. So um, Chevy, can you, am I, it looks like I might be frozen. Am I frozen? I'm from back. I'm back. So um <laughs> Did you hear? Did you hear who the winner was, or did I freeze out before yes. the winner? Yes. Okay. Fantastic. So before <laughs> um, we go, and I want to hope you'll join us next week for the next session, which is with um, Dr. Mark McGuire and his mentor, Judge Walter Rice. A very different story, and but also a wonderful relationship. Chevy, there are limited seats coming up for military mentors. Third session of the moment you want to just tell people what the moment is and how if they're interested they can claim one of those last seats yes yeah, so the moment quick uh quick and dirty you would it's eight to three eight a.m to three p.m on the 21st of january at the alx community waterfront in alexandria virginia so if you're in the north uh, um, uh, national capital region you want to check us out 
on a Saturday on a waterfront and learn more about the kind of intentionality that we're talking about, come on out. It is to some people a conference. It is to most who attend not. It is immersive experience that is there. You can't zoom it. You can't teams it. Uh, we don't put anything on social media. We're not hashtagging it during the day. Um, it looks like someone's living room in the front where you can sit down and be close and be intimate. Uh, but obviously, it's a it's a center for putting on um, uh, events. So it's literally not somebody's living room. But it's just an intense, immersive day for you to invest in yourself to you learn more about this thing called mentoring and for us to learn how to develop each other. Have a couple of guest speakers for the day. Uh, we have a panel uh, as well, and we will feed you both breakfast and lunch. So again, it is a one day intensive immersive experience where you will learn more about the art and the science of mentoring, not from me and not from my teammates, but from a lot of external stakeholders that believe in this as much as you believe in yourself. So if you do believe in yourself and you come on out, you can check us out. You can look on militarymentors.org, our website, and you can find out more about it through our events uh, page. And I will tell you this as the last uh, footnote. If this is not the best professional development experience you've been to in the last year, I will pay you back for your ticket. I will take. I will go one more step. If you fly from Washington or something like that, and it is not the best thing you've been to professional development wise, I will pay for your plane ticket. Chevy said it. I've been recorded. Wow. I've been, right. I've been saying that since the first one. I haven't refunded anybody yet. So it is that good. I know I'm biased, but I haven't had to refund anybody yet. And I, I will stand by it. It is, a, it is a great, great, great event. I encourage you all to check it out. You can go to um, militarymentors.org uh, to check that out. All right. Well, I'm going to stay on um, here to answer any of your mentoring questions. Chevy and Jim, if you can stay on, fantastic. I know you also may uh, awesome. have uh, busy working lives as well, so feel free to duck out. But um, I'm here for questions. It looks like John had one. He wanted to know what MRE stands for. What does MRE stand for, Chevy? <laughs> Meals ready to eat. This is packaged uh, meals that they're ready to eat, but they're not ready to enjoy. Uh, that's, not, that's not what the E stands for. Think freeze dry. Prepackaged meals for the military. Yeah, it's kind of some of them are freeze dried. It's just kind of prepackaged stuff. Uh, man, I haven't had an MRE in a long time. Don't want one either. Great. Again, if you have to go, no sweat. Thank you so much for joining. Please do join us next week for Dr. McGuire and Judge Rice. Um, but we're here for any questions. If you want to stay on, you can just unmute yourself or go ahead and uh, put it in the chat.